In the 20th century, science and medicine made a huge breakthrough. Penicillin was invented, which saved the lives of millions of people around the world. In 1932, scientists accurately determined the cause of scurvy, which helped to completely eradicate the disease. And in 1935, a unique method was invented to treat auditive and visual hallucinations, insomnia, and various brain tumors. But unlike the above, this discovery brought the doctor not worldwide fame and glory, but as a reputation as an executioner. It was the Portuguese psychiatrist and neurosurgeon Igas Moniz. He devoted most of his life to studying the human brain. As a result, he came up with a way to treat mental disorders in the hope of helping people suffering from schizophrenia and similar diseases. However, his treatment at times harmed people more than it helped them. After the operation, people lost the ability to feel emotions and speak, lost their appetite, sense of smell, short-term memory, and worst of all, the desire to live. And thus, one of the most promising and effective methods of treating schizophrenia, which was forever supposed to rid the world of mental illness, became one of the cruelest and most condemning tortures in modern history. We're talking about lobotomy, the infamous operation that turns thousands of people into walking corpses. Mental illness has always been a huge problem, not only for those who directly suffer from it, but also for everyone around them. After all, such a person often does not control his emotions, shows aggression, and commits impulsive and rash acts. And at the beginning of the 20th century, this problem became as relevant as possible. In the 1920s, psychiatric hospitals were overcrowded and no method of treating psychiatric illnesses gave the desired results. Basically, doctors drug schizophrenic patients with drugs that put the patient in an artificial coma for several days or even weeks. Also, electroshock therapy was used for patients, but did have a long-term effect. All these led to an in-depth study of the work of the human brain and to the understanding that all our emotions, actions, and thoughts are a consequence of the work of various parts of the brain and not the organ as a whole. Each department is responsible for a specific function motor, control of the endocrine system, speech, perception, reproduction of emotions, and logical thinking. Based on this, scientists realize that in order to fight mental illness, you need to learn how to identify and directly influence the part of the brain that is the focus of the disease. And in 1935, the Portuguese Igas Moniz developed the lobotomy. He hypothesized that the intersection of afferents and efferent fibers in the frontal lobe could effectively treat mental disorders. The first operation was carried out in 1936. It consisted of a surgical intervention and the introduction into the cranium, most often through the eye socket or temples of a caret, caret or a special loop, the role of which in the first test was performed by the very tool for splitting ice, followed by cutting the lobes of the brain. This operation is divided into two types. First, frontal manipulation in which holes are drilled on both sides of the skull, usually in the areas of the temples, after which a special tool is inserted into them with a loup coat. And with its help, the connections between the brain regions are damaged. Such an operation was often performed not only for the treatment of psychological illnesses, but also for cutting out brain tumors because it allowed direct access to the cranium. Second, transorbital. The only difference of this type of the frontal lobotomy is that the leucotomy is not introduced directly through the hole in the skull, but through the eye socket with pre-punching holes in the bone of the eye socket. This method of leucotomy was invented by 1945 by Walter Freeman. The operation was actually done blindly, and during excision, not only the deceased part of the brain suffered, but also the healthy ones. The essence of leucotomy was to disrupt the neural connections between brain regions. As a result, a person lost one or another brain function due to the inability of the organ to synchronize and transmit neural impulses from one department to another in reaction to a stimulus. Scientists at that time already knew that the frontal lobe was the main part of the brain responsible for the manifestation of emotions and the perception of information. And it works due to signals from deeper parts of the brain, for example, the hypothalamus, which is responsible for the endocrine system and therefore for the release of hormones. It was concluded that by disrupting the connection between the frontal lobe and the hypothalamus, it is possible to deprive a person, for example, of such symptoms as panic attacks or hallucinations, due to a violation of the exchange of neurotransmitters. It all sounds very scary, but Dr. Moniz tracked the progress of patients after the operation, and based on the results of observations in 1936, he published the results in which it was reported that among the 20 patients who underwent the operation, seven recovered, seven had a positive trend, and six had no visible results. 
If his results are not severely criticized, it may indeed seem that the treatment is quite effective, but Moniz's actual sample was too small. Of the 20 people listed in the reports, a maximum of half was observed, which makes the results completely biased and useless. Yes, and clearly recorded cases of positive dynamics were strongly criticized by scientists, because when fixing the results, Moniz took into account for the most part the physical condition of the patients and the absence of symptoms of the disease that the lobotomy was supposed to cure. But the doctor did not take into account the most important thing, mental changes in patients' personalities after surgery, and a further change in the state of people in the long term. After all, in less than a year of observations, it is difficult to say how much brain surgery could affect a person. All people who went through this terrible operation suffered not only from the loss of taste and smell, but also from personality degradation throughout their lives. A person literally lost interest in those things that he was fond of earlier. Empathy for other people was lost. The level of intelligence fell. He could no longer restrain these emotions that remained. And often, people had tantrums or periods of too impulsive behavior. But that's not all. Although the lobotomy helped cure schizophrenia or get rid of brain tumors, this operation was carried out so roughly that in addition to the part of the brain affected by the disease, the neighboring ones were also severely damaged. All this also caused epileptic seizures, a deterioration in overall coordination. Surprisingly, despite the controversy and disagreement in the scientific community regarding this type of surgical intervention, lobotomy was still quite popular in the middle of the 20th century and its inventor even received the Nobel Prize for the discovery of lusotomy and its effect on people with mental illness. And yet, it is worth giving him credit. His invention helped to make a huge leap in neurosurgery, and it was effective in its own way, although not always. Sometimes, such operations ended even with a deterioration in the condition of patients compared to the period before surgery. There are many stories from the relatives of those who suffered from a lobotomy. For example, we have the story of Mona Gable, whose mother went through this terrible operation twice, in 1945 and in 1953. The reason for the surgery was brain tumors, and the first operation to remove them was extremely successful. The woman recovered and did not receive any consequences of the lobotomy. But the second operation has already caused irreparable harm to the woman's physical and mental health. And the reason was that this time, not only the tumor was removed, but also both frontal lobes of the brain. By the way, this is exactly the part of our brain that is responsible for planning, socialization, speech, short-term memory, and expression of emotions. In general, for all the functions of higher brain activity. Consequently, damage to the frontal lobes leads to irreparable degenerative changes in a person. Specifically, in the case of Mona, her mother had epileptic seizures. She could not taste or smell. She developed alcoholism, and she could not restrain herself in expressions, constantly swearing. The woman suffered from short-term memory loss and could not absorb new information, due to which her vocabulary remained at the level of the 50s of the 20th century. She could not control her emotions or actions, which is now called poor impulse control. This led to her stealing the family car, stealing money, cooking at night thinking it was lunchtime, chasing her own son around the house with a baseball bat, and generally expressing gratuitous aggression towards people at times. In general, the woman completely lost control of herself, from which she and her family members suffered. And we have thousands of such examples. The operation, which was originally aimed at treating seriously ill mental ill people, turned out to be no better, perhaps even worse than the disease itself. But for the sake of justice, it is worth noting that in some cases, lochotomy helped to remove the symptoms of the disease without worsening the patient's condition too much. And in the case of Mona Gable, her mother did not initially have any mental illness. The operation was aimed at removing brain tumors, and the second was carried out during pregnancy, which caused a deterioration in the woman's condition. The most famous person who went through a lobotomy was Rosemary Kennedy, the elder sister of the 35th US President John F. Kennedy. In infancy, she was an ordinary child, but over time, her parents began to notice that their daughter was lagging behind her peers in developments. The girl could not learn to walk, talk, or even crawl for a long time. At a younger age, the girl did not cause any problems for her parents, even despite her peculiarity, but her character changed in the course of growing up. She became almost uncontrollable, aggressive, and impulsive. Her parents were afraid that the girl, due to developmental delays and mental characteristics, could do something that would disgrace the family. As a result, in 1941, the father gave his permission to lobotomize his daughter, and that was probably the biggest mistake of his life. After the operation, she completely fell in development to the level of a two-year-old child. The girl forgot how to speak and walk and 
and lost control of her hands. She was no longer able to return to normal, and until she died in 2005, she never learned to speak or walk again without limping. This case became one of the most indicative for the opponents of lobotomy in order to make its use unacceptable. And yet, given the fact that in mental hospitals of the 20th century, patients were treated like animals and subjected to various tortures, including treatment with electric current, which could last for hours, a lobotomy is probably not the worst option, even despite its controversial effectiveness. Lobotomy was banned in 1953, but despite this, such operations are carried out even now, but only in extreme cases when there are no other alternatives. Disputes about the appropriateness of such a surgical intervention also remain relevant. Do you think lobotomy is good or bad? Write in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Here, you will find a lot of interesting things. See ya!